Did you know that celery was a pretty big deal in the 1800s through the early 1900s? On this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Sallow is described as a refreshing beverage flavored with essence of celery seed. While we may think that a celery flavored soda is strange or unappetizing today, in the 20s and 30s, sodas and tonics with unique flavors were all the rage. Many locals were crazy about Cello, which was produced in Tampa, Florida. Most early sodas were created by druggists because sodas usually had natural ingredients and offered some type of medicinal healing. So Cello was created by Tampa pharmacist W. Truman Green in his North Franklin Street drugstore around 1915. It actually didn't do well until the 20s. For a brief time, Cello was bottled in Bradenton in a plant on Manatee Avenue, but soon it was bottled exclusively in Tampa. Peter Harley Sr. remembers that Cello, quote, tasted like celery, very much like plain soda water with a celery flavor. It wasn't like Coke or Delaware Punch, it was more like 7-Up with a celery flavor." Unquote. Celery was a dominant crop in Manatee County, and the Manatee County Growers Association were proud endorsers of Cello, claiming it was the drink that is good for your nerves. It was sold in drugstores, vending machines, and other businesses all over Manatee County and the Tampa Bay area. During the 1930s, it was incredibly successful. Henry Daniels remembers that he would get cello at the barber shop. Quote, we must have liked it because there were other drinks that we could have had like Coca-Cola, but we always got the cello, he said. At the height of its popularity, cello was a featured item at the second Venetian Nights Festival in early February 1930 at the Bradenton Pier. Cello ice cream and the Hanlon's Bakery Cello Cake were huge stars as well as the bottled soda. In the 1930s, Manatee County residents bought stock in Cello, hoping that it would be the next Coca-Cola, but in 1938, the company was sold and their stock became worthless. Cello virtually disappeared overnight. Cello could have been lost forever, but apparently there's a version out there called Dr. Brown's Cell Ray. You can find it in New York and South Florida, and apparently online. Now, let's talk condiments. Have you ever heard of celery sauce? Recipes for celery sauce in the late 1800s and early 1900s were common. Here's one from the Virginia Housewife, which was printed about the 1820s. Basically, you boil down some celery until it's tender. You add flour, butter, cream, spices, and then you use it on different meats and vegetables. Henry Hines actually started making condiments way back in 1869, starting with horseradish, and quickly expanded his product line to include a variety of pickled foods and condiments. He had very eye-catching labels and clear glass bottles to show off the product. He partnered with a guy named Noble, and they added celery sauce, pickled cucumbers, sauerkraut, and vinegar to their line of products. In 1872, Noble's brother joined as a partner, and the business became Heinz Noble & Company. By 1875, their business had become wildly successful. Today, cooked celery is one of the most universally hated vegetables, but celery was once a great luxury one of the most fashionable foods to grace the table. The wealthy served it as a centerpiece at every dinner, while the average middle-class family reserved it for holiday meals. The celery craze was increasing rapidly in the 1870s, and Dutch farmers who knew how to handle the wetlands began growing the vegetable in the marshy soils of Kalamazoo, Michigan, which became known as Celery City. The streets were littered with farmers peddling celery from street corners and train stations. As American cultivation improved, celery became an everyman's item. Olives and celery had been on hors d'oeuvre menus and relish trays in fancy restaurants and hotel dining rooms beginning around the 1880s. 
Along with olives, celery was offered as a palate cleanser following a fish course or as a refresher after a soup course. Celery was so classy that first-class passengers aboard the Titanic ate dinner with celery along with roast squab, cress, and... Pâté de foie gras. Which I never heard of, but apparently is this pâté stuff that you put on bread. No Victorian household was complete without a glass celery vase. It's a tall, tulip-shaped bowl atop a pedestal to prominently display the vegetable. The height of popularity for celery vases was from the 1830s through the 1880s, but they were still being made well into the 1910s. The vases had a counterpart, a celery dish, which was a long, narrow, boat-shaped bowl somewhat resembling an inverted butter dish. And one more celery-related bottle that I can think of is Payne's Celery Compound. I don't actually have this bottle in my collection yet. In 1874, Edward Phelps, a professor at Dartmouth Medical College, came up with a formula for a tonic with the basic properties of the celery seed. This formula was taken to Milton Payne, a local druggist, and became known as Payne's Celery Compound. This formula was prescribed so much by local physicians that Mr. Payne, the local druggist, soon found himself unable to cope with the huge demand for Payne's Celery Compound, and in 1887 he transferred his interest to the Wells and Richardson Company. During the next 12 months, the sales were over 72,000 bottles, and the demand kept increasing. The company apparently embellished the recipe. Besides celery, some reports state that the compound contained alcohol and cocaine. After regulations in 1906, the company likely joined Coca-Cola in dropping cocaine from its formula. See? You didn't know celery was such a cool vegetable, did you? Well, now you do. Now go eat some celery, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.